Hi everyone, I'm Lisa and welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. About a couple weeks ago now, I hosted a semi-annual retreat. I do it twice a year and I invite all my Stampin' friends to come and join me and it's a great time. I love to host an event with a theme and this one was centered around a tea party. And I created a favor for them that I gave them in the afternoon that they loved and I decided that you probably needed to learn it as well. And it's this. It's a tea bag favor that actually holds honey sticks for the tea. I made it using the envelope punch board and some simple stamping and I can't wait to share it with you. It's easy to duplicate and I think this would be a great, great favor for weddings or showers and even change up the contents and maybe for a birthday party. What do you say we get over to the stamp table and we get started? You can get a good look at this now that I've got it up closer for you. The envelope is actually wide enough to hold more than one tea bag, so I opted to put two in there. I also included two of the honey sticks. Now I bought the tea bags and the honey sticks online through Amazon, but of course you can get these at the grocery store. I don't think I've ever seen the honey sticks at our grocery store, but you may be able to find them locally. I bought them in bulk so they were very affordable. Let me show you how easy this is to put together. I started with a piece of Blushing Bride cardstock and this measures five and a half by five and a half. We're gonna start with the envelope punch board. You'll find here on the side that there's a complete list of cardstock sizes as well as card sizes so that you know exactly what size envelope you're gonna need. So I've cut my paper five and a half by five and a half. So you can see here it says to do the first score line at two and three eighths. The great thing about the envelope punch board is if you have difficulty measuring, you don't have to worry because it's all printed for you. There's a bone folder that's stored here on the side, which I'm going to use. And the only time you need that measurement is for the very first score line. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna line this up at two and three eighths. And I am going to punch by pressing firmly on the back and then scoring. Now there's a track here. I like to use the bone folder upside down. I think it was intended this way, but it works better this way. I start way up inside of here, and I just follow the track. Now you're gonna turn it, and there's no more measuring required. I'm just gonna line up the pointer on that score line, and I'm gonna punch again, and then I'm gonna score again. I'm gonna turn it again. I'm gonna line up the pointer on that score line, punch and score. Now we have one more. So I'm lining it up again here. Punch and score. That's all there is to it. Now we're just gonna stamp and put it together. So I'm using that same bone folder from the envelope punch board and I'm gonna crease on these lines. The reason I crease before I stamp, and it's just a Lisa thing, I like to know where it's going to land. So I find by creasing I can see better. I'm going to use the same color ink as paper, and this is Blushing Bride. I like that really subtle tone on tone. And I'm using this gorgeous cluster of flowers, and this is from the stamp set called Birthday Blooms. I have used this so much. If you've watched my videos or followed my blog, you can see I've really gotten my money's worth out of this. Now, whenever the stamp is close in size to the ink pad, I prefer to ink it this way. So I'm going to leave it face up on the table, and I'm going to tap. Now, you're probably wondering why. The reason is, is it tend to miss here in the center. So you can use the end of your ink pad to make sure that you get in there so you don't miss. And then I am going to stamp randomly all over this little envelope to create a background. I'm gonna do the same thing again by repeating that process. Remember that if you don't re-ink your stamp, it's gonna create a lighter image the next time around. So there we go, and I think I'm going to do one more. The image is very large, so that's going to help me um, chew up a lot of space on this. And then this one will go up here. Okay, so now the envelope is all finished. This will actually go like this, but you're going to see here that there's a peak, and this really bugs me. So there's two things that you can do. You can take your scissors and cut that off. I got a little fancy, and I used my paper trimmer. So remember that the light blade is for scoring and the dark blade is for cutting. And I just sliced part of this off. So now we're ready to assemble it. I'm gonna put tear tape here and here to seal it because I want those triangles 
to the center of my envelope. I don't want them on the outside. That's just my preference. There really is no right or wrong way. You don't want to put tape here because otherwise it could fall on the inside. And I found that this was plenty strong enough. So I'm using my paper piercing tool to help get the paper off. Really important, make sure that you burnish this paper down because you want to make sure that it's going to stick when you go to pull off the paper backing and you don't lift the entire strip of tape. Okay, and then we're just gonna seal this. So now we have our pocket. Then what I did is I took this to the back and I didn't want this pointed. So here's the beauty of the envelope punch board. There is a corner rounder built into it. So let me show you how this works. You're gonna hold it sideways. You're gonna stick your paper in there and you're just gonna push and it's gonna round it perfectly. Now back here, I don't need a whole lot of room to put in the actual honey sticks. So what I did is I added some more tear tape and I actually put in two rows. So I'm gonna put one row here and one row here. There's nothing worse than a 3D project that falls apart. So I'm always a bit more generous with my projects with adhesive um, when they are three dimensional. I'm gonna remove that with my paper piercing tool and then I'm gonna fold this to the back. So now you can see there's still area here for me to tuck the tea sticks in. Now I found that it was tight originally, so I stuck my bone folder in there and I kind of loosened it up a little bit. So that'll allow me to be able to slide those in real easy. The next step was a belly band. I used this beautiful birthday bouquet designer paper. This is a one inch strip and I cut it nine inches long. Now I'm gonna cover the seam, so I'm actually going to wrap it around the back and then come to the front. And I'm gonna add a little bit of snail adhesive to connect this. You're not gonna to wanna to make the belly band too tight because remember, it's gonna expand a little bit when you put your tea bags inside or whatever favor that you're using. So I'm gonna put a little bit of tape here and I'm gonna wrap this around and I'm connecting those. All right, now let's embellish the front. The stamp set balloon celebration has some really cute verbiage in it. This one says, come let us sit together and drink and then you can fill in with different things. There's coffee, hot chocolate, and of course tea. So I decided that's what we needed to use. I used a soft suede ink for my words and I've got those mounted. So here this says, come let us sit and drink. And this one says tea. And you gotta love photopolymer. It really helps to make things easy to line up. I'm gonna use the one and a half inch circle punch and that's gonna punch out my words. I'm just gonna center it the very best that I can. And I'm gonna pop those out. This is a piece of Sahara sand cardstock. And now I'm using the one and three quarter inch scallop circle punch. And I'm gonna punch out a scallop to put those words on. So I'm just gonna flip this over and put a little snail adhesive on the back and center that on top of my scallop. And then I love dimensionals. They give things a little bit of a lift and sure make it look fancy, don't they? Now, just a note of caution, don't put your dimensionals here and here. So I kind of just stuck them here in the center, took off that paper backing and then put my words on. I wanted to make sure my dimensionals didn't fall in a place where this was going to rock. Okay, so that pocket's all done. Here I've got my two tea bags and my honey sticks, and we're gonna shimmy those in the back. And those are gonna fit right through there, nice and tight, but not too tight, they're not gonna fall out. Isn't that cute? And I think this would make a great favor. You can change up the contents for a birthday party, but this is a great little spot to hold a little something long. I hope that you've enjoyed today's project and don't forget that you can order all the supplies in my online store. The link to my blog is listed here on the screen and I offer great exclusive rewards for any size order, including frequent buyer points. Head over there and check them all out. I'm so glad that you've joined me, everyone. Have a great week.